So it is my pleasure to introduce the first speaker of today, Dr. Wong Jun Shim. Dr. Shim is a principal research scientist at the Korea Institute of Ocean Science and Technology and a professor at the Department of Applied Ocean Science at the Korea University of Science and Technology. His scientific background is environmental chemistry. His research focuses on the development of analytical methods for microplastics, assessment and characterization of microplastic pollution, and a weathering process of producing microplastics. He has published over 200 peer-reviewed journal articles. Today, Dr. Shim is going to talk about a comparison of micro FTIR APR, micro FTIR transmission, and a random analysis for beach sediment samples. Take it away, Dr. Shim. Hello, everyone. I'm very glad to contribute to this Global Microplastic Symposium. This work was done by the, my postdoc and two other uh, collaborators in my laboratory. Analysis of microplastic in the complex environmental sample is one of the challenging tasks because microplastic has a wide spectrum of size, morphology, and polymer types. The general procedure for microplastic analysis in environmental samples includes sampling and extraction and cleanup and finally physical and chemical characterization. Today, my topic will cover this in a characterization part. Based on literature review study, still, a very limited study using spectroscopic chemical confirmation method in microplastic identification. In our previous study, we revealed that only microscopic confirmation of microplastic in the samples significantly underestimated small fragment time microplastic while significantly overestimated the fiber time microplastics. When we are looking at closely fiber time microplastic in bivalve tissues, among all the microplastic particles identified by spectroscopy, synthetic polymer emits real microfiber only accounted for 17% of the identified fibers, whether cotton and natural fiber include in over 70% of the fibers are natural. It means when you are using only microscopic conformation for microplastic analysis, lead us to wrong microplastic abundance data. So it is strongly recommended to chemical characterization method uh, such as spectroscopy or spectrometry for get chemical fingerprinting data. And also polymer completion data can provide very, very useful information about source and fatable microplastics. Generally, the vibrational spectroscopy, FTIL and Raman is most popular uh, identification method for microplastics. They can identify the chemical composition of a microplastic by producing unique molecular fingerprinting of samples without destruction. Among the chemical characterization methods today, I only cover the spectroscopic method. The each vibrational spectroscopic method has advantages and limitations. In, in our, in my the previous review paper, I compared that various analytical methods for microplastic analysis. Today, I very briefly mentioned uh, some the key advantages and limitation. When using actual manual methods such as an alternative to the total reflectance or transmission mode, we can get very clear visual image spectrum. 
But when we are targeting every single particle with manually, it will require a long time and better labor intensive. And also manual selection of a plastic like a particle may miss the microplastic, we call the false negative. And other FTL automated mapping analysis really reduces human visual selection errors, but it produces a very large data set. It requires long post processing time. And also, the full automated identification has very high possibility to produce false positive identification. Finally, Raman manual load mapping process to identify smaller size microplastic than FTIL, as we know very well. That's why the previous study only focused very limited area of filter paper. It, it, it bring the lack of representativeness of the sample. And we tried to analyze the whole filter paper is really, really labor intensive and time consuming. So when we select the appropriate identification method for microplastic samples in real environmental samples, the selection criteria depending on number of samples, targeted microplastic size range, and number of interfering particles and straw. But generally, I think the practical identification method require the following four aspects. First, it needs to reduce the time demand for analysis, and it needs to reduce force negative as well as force positive identification. Finally, need to increase representativeness of the sample. That's why in my study, we try to compare current microplastic identification method using vibrational spectroscopy with the real complex environmental samples. Their performance was you know, evaluated with the four requirements I mentioned earlier. For this study, we collected the pitch sediment samples from high strand line uh, A beach in Korea. So after the homogenization of the, the sand samples, we prepared five replicate samples. Microplastic particles were extracted from the sediment using a density separation with lithium metatom state and interfering organic material was removed by wet oxide oxidation and separated again with lithium metatom state solution and finally supernatant was filtered with analytic filter paper. In our first comparison study, we tried to compare five actual spectroscoping methods. First one is the manual detection of all plastic like particles when conventional method. Second one is after ultra fast mapping of the whole filter paper and the acquired spectrum was profiled, and we manually checking of for the positive identification after profiling. We call this procedure the SEMI. Third one is SEMI-1. After uh, SEMI procedure, we add one more confirmation step of a fiber time microplastic with optical mosaic image. For mass, force method is fully automated identification. It means after ultrafast mapping and spectrum profiling, we automatically conducted chemical image analysis by in a software, and it automatically uh, measured the size, shape, and uh, count the number of microplastics. So finally, auto one method uh, assigned to, we add another manual checking of a post positive identification after image analysis. I, I try to explain in detail. The ultra fast mapping and spectrum profiling means we try to get a uh, three section per sample of a mosaic image. It depends on filter area 
But when we use the anode discovery, the 25 millimeter diameter, we need to separate the split in certain sections. So we conducted the ultra fast mapping with the 16 array detector. A total of filter paper needs one and a half hour for ultra fast mapping. And profiling, we compare. It means correlate the acquired mapping spectra with the reference spectra set up in my laboratory in advance. Finally, we check manually spectrum one by one with library matching. The heating rate is over 70%. We finally count. This is the microplastics. In fully auto method, or uh, with the previous in the method, we add chemical image analysis. As I mentioned earlier, it was done by automatically by software. So they count the numbers automatically. But after this method, we need to check again manually the whole, remove the whole, the false positive data based on the single spectrum. We add the extra step for semi auto analysis because in case of a fiber, fiber was you know, judged by aspect ratio, generally less than 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 when microplastic is smaller than uh, 100 microns. But only with the chemical image, sometimes it's very hard to the, uh, judge if this is you know, fiber type or just fragment type. That's why we need to compare that chemical image and optical image and uh, finally judge if this is the fragment of fiber. This step is we call in you know, a semi one. This slide shows reference spectra for 12 common polymers found in Imramta samples. This, the reference spectra were, were uh, obtained from various Imramta samples. But there is one very important step because we only targeted 12 polymers, but during the manual checking process after profiling, we could detect another polymer. It means when we run the profiling for polypropylene or polyethylene, there are other polymers detected again for we in you know, this profiling process. So during manual checking process, we check a new polymer and we run the profile again with the new polymer. That's why generally reported polymer number is uh, every time is over 12 polymer times. Second competitive study, we compare FTI and Raman spectroscopy. The first one is manual ATL method, very conventional one, the most popular method uh, previously. Second one is, I already mentioned, the manual transmission. Third one is the same, same auto. And finally, we add Raman manual method. The comparison, the aspect of uh, point is the same as the previous approach. This is the specification of the instrumentation we used. FTL manual, ATL method, we use a Nicolet i 10 MX version, but in this case, we use polycarbonate filter other than analytics because uh, the ATL probe can, could not be used for analytics, it's very rebel. And FTL manual and semi auto method, we use the same machine, but spectral range is a little changed because of an anode disk in absorption of an IR. Raman, we use some scientific DXR2 Raman microscope. We use a laser 532 nanometer with you know, 3, 3 to 5 milliwatt in the power. The upper is 25 micron computer pinhole, exposure time is one to three seconds with the five scans. This is the result. When we compare five after spectroscoping method, we they really check the you know, time span for analysis. When whole analytical time is looks very comparable, but ultra fast mapping 
did not occupy operator time. So, so I, when we eliminated the ultra fast mapping time, semi auto and auto method faster than the manual analysis save two hours. But another important point is after ultra fast mapping, the post processing can be done by any computer installed with the Omni PITA software. It means that instrumentation can be used for the ultra fast mapping for another sample. So when we uh, count the equipment occupancy time, we can save 4.5 hours for semi auto analysis compared to manual analysis. It's very important for the managed laboratory equipment. In case of a number of polymer detected, manual and semi auto analysis, you know, comparable, but auto and auto one analysis is significantly lower number of polymer types were detected. Because, you know, auto and auto one analysis, you know, could not detect the certain minor polymers. When we compare that number of microplastic particle size and fiber, interestingly, fully auto identification method reported the highest number of microplastics. But when we check the manually again that fully auto identification method, you can see that the abruptly decreased the number of microplastic particles. It means there are many wrong identification. That's why the false positive rate is up to 80% in auto. And number of signs, the bean size is a little higher than auto analysis, but because they conducted only chemical image analysis, that's why the, the blow of that image can increase in the size of uh, uh, microplastics. Interestingly, Auto and auto one method couldn't detect any fiber type microplastics. And semi auto method, a little number of fibers are detected compared to manual analysis, but it's not significantly different. But when we add one more step to compare the mosaic, the optical image with a chemical image, the number of fiber detection is increased uh, compared to just the semi analysis. When you compare that FTR and Raman spectroscopy, exceptionally very long analysis time is required for manual Raman analysis. And here the method is comparable. But anyway, the, I will mention the semi auto method is slightly less time required for manual transmission ATL method. On the other hand, Number of uh, microplastic particles detected by each method, you can see that Raman detected more particles and followed by semi auto manual transmission and ATL method. The mean abundance of microplastic using Raman was 1.423 times higher than uh, the other method. It is due to Raman spectroscopy that can detect the smaller particle than FTIR. We mentioned earlier in the advantage of Raman analysis. The other three methods, the peak microplastic size appeared in between 50 to 100 microns. But still, semi auto method can detect the microplastics less than 50 microns. But Manual latent transmission method, the smaller particle detection is abruptly uh, decreased. When it compared the polymer numbers detected with the four different method, transmission mode manual and transmission semi automatic method produced significantly more polymer types compared to ATR and Raman. But major polymer type, this looks similar, but minor types showed some changes. Based on these two 
comparison set of studies, we can conclude that semi-automated analytical method using FTIL mapping, spectrum profiling, and subsequent manual checking was reliable and suitable for microclass analysis in real environmental samples in this study. In all the evaluation points, such as time demand for analysis and reduction of false positive and false negative counts and fiber detection. But full automated arithmetic method using FTL was not recommendable at current stage because it produced a significant number of false positive or false negative microplastic counts. In environmental sample, it's very dangerous to refer to false positive numbers. So I recommend that when the samples when the fully automated identity method was used for the microplastic analysis in environmental samples, at least for the positive identification rate should be checked with another method and reported together. Finally, the Raman was suitable for small sized microplastic analysis, but very long analytical time must be improved for practical application. I may recommend it may be used to supplementary method at the moment, along with the semi auto FTI analysis uh, to detect a smaller size to the microplastics. This study was supported by Minister of Environment and Minister of Science and Technology in Korea. Thank you for listening.